The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with Go South, young man, from the Cotton Club Review. <laughs> Whether it's a company dinner or just a regular family affair, any meal will be a greater success if it's topped off with a delicious dessert. And no dessert is more delicious or more popular than Jell-O. Jell-O is a grand dessert, easy to prepare, swell to look at, and luscious to taste. Jell-O is crammed with extra-rich fruit flavor, a true fruit goodness that rivals the flavor of fresh, ripe fruit itself. But remember this, there's only one Jell-O, and only Jell-O brings you that special extra-rich fruit flavor. So, if you want to top your dinner with a dessert that will be an assured success, serve Jell-O. But be sure you get genuine Jell-O. Don't accept any substitutes. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. That was Go South, young man, from the Cotton Club Review. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who every Sunday night at the same time walks up to the microphone, looks it square in the eye, and says... Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. <laughs> well, well, well. Come on, Jack. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, Don, that was a cute opening. That was a nice introduction and nice teamwork, too, I thought. You and I certainly work well together, don't we? Oh, yes, we do, Jack. It's remarkable the way we seem to balance each other. What was that, Don? <laughs> I say it's remarkable the way we balance each other. I think so. Of course, we would have a little trouble on a seesaw. <laughs> <laughs> say, Don, can you imagine the both of us on a seesaw? Me way up in the clouds and you down on the good earth? <laughs> Gee, it makes me dizzy. Oh, boy. Well, uh, Jack, do you want me to get off? Woo! Don't you dare! <laughs> My feet are flat enough now. <laughs> anyway, Don, we're too old to be playing around on a seesaw. Yeah, let's go over to the sand pile. Oh, let's drop this silly talk. We're getting a little bit goofy. Aren't we all? Hello, Jack. <laughs> well, Kenny, of all people, what are you doing here? Oh, I was on my way to the movies, and I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, you couldn't have got lost in a better place. We can use you here. Yeah. Say, Jack, I want to thank you for inviting me over to your house for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, that's all right, Kenny. You're always welcome. And I want to thank you, too, Jack. And I also want to congratulate you for cooking that big dinner all by yourself. Oh, it was nothing, Don. I always do that. You may not know this, but I'm considered to be quite a cook. Oh, you are? Oh, for years I've been known as Prudence Benny of Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> and my pies. You know, I'm famous for my lemon marinju. <laughs> marinju? Well, that's marangay. Mary oh, is that the way it's pronounced? <laughs> oh. Gee, you learn something every day. Huh? Well, well, so you cooked the Thanksgiving dinner all by yourself, eh, Jack? Yes, Phil, with my very own hands. Why didn't you come? Did you have a previous engagement? No, just a hunch. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, well, you missed something. It was a grand meal. We had all the trimmings and everything you wanted to drink. Everything. Gee, everybody else had wine with each course, and you made me drink milk. Well, Kenny, you're too young. Besides, milk is good for you. Milk goes with anything. Doesn't go with my brown suit. <laughs> well, the turkey was good, wasn't it? Say, Jack, don't tell me you served that old bird Andy Devine gave you last week. Yes, Phil, and it was all right, wasn't it, Don? Well, it surprised me, Jack. That turkey looked so tough, and yet it turned out so tender. What did you do? I cooked it with a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> that did it. Huh? A blowtorch? That's a fine way to cook a turkey. Why didn't you put it in the oven? I tried to, Phil, but it kept jumping out all the time. I can't understand it either. I put paperweights in the dressing. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, kitchen mechanic. Hmm. Well, Mary, did you enjoy my Thanksgiving dinner? No kidding. How was it, Mary? Oh, it was swell. We had everything from soup to bicarbonate of soda. Hmm. And what mashed potatoes? I'll say. They were so lumpy, Jack had to serve them in the sugar bowl. I didn't have to. I was short of dishes. Gee. I thought those mashed potatoes were swell. They were so nice and tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tan.
canned potatoes? Well, the stove was crowded and I had to cook them under the sun lamp. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the turkey was delicious. I got a wing and it was swell. I got a leg and it kicked me. <laughs> oh, it did. I got a neck with a collar button in it. Why don't you stay out of the kitchen, Jack? That's a woman's job. Now, Phil, that's the most ridiculous thing you've ever said. That's ridiculous. I mean, men are better in everything. Our greatest cooks are men. Our greatest dress designers are men. Our greatest dancers are men. Our greatest... <laughs> what are you laughing at? When you get to mothers, watch out. <laughs> well, the greatest fathers are men. Got that over. Anyway, it's a fine thing to come to my house for dinner and criticize it. That was real home cooking. Why, you never tasted such rolls in all your life. Boy, were they heavy. They were not. I had to jack mine up to butter it. <laughs> a fine appreciation after the trouble I went to. I work and slave over a hot stove, and what do I get? Oh, Jack, now what's the matter with you? They're only kidding. Why, everybody had a good time and enjoyed the dinner. Oh, no, they didn't. And here's something else I wasn't going to mention, but I will now. This will fix you guys. <laughs> I had five people to dinner, and six spoons were missing. <laughs> Six. I took two. <laughs> well, give me one back. Don't be a pig. Do you want the, you want the one from the Brown Derby? <laughs> no, the one from the Ambassador. I've got a set. <laughs> and now if you fellas are all through heckling my dinner, maybe we can have a selection from the orchestra. Play, Phil. Hmm, for two cents, I tear up my cookbook. <laughs> you you can stop me from cuddling too you can treat me mean honey that's all right but i'll get even with you tonight cause you can't stop me from dreaming you can stop me from holding hands make me listen to your command you can say no, no, honey, that's all right But I'll get even with you tonight Cause you can't stop me from dreaming From one o'clock till nine I'll dream your mind I'll steal a kiss Just see what you're going to miss You can stop me romancing you You're the boss now, but we're not through just turn me down, honey, that's all right, cause I'll get even with you tonight, cause you can't stop me from dreaming. You Can't Stop Me From Dreaming, played by the orchestra with a vocal chorus by Phil Harris. Say, Phil, that was quite a surprise. I didn't know you were going to slip in a solo there. Did you, Kenny? No, I didn't either. Oh, it was just a sudden impulse. It was, eh? What made you sing? I'm mad at the piano player, and he hates my voice. <laughs> oh, well, you certainly fixed him. What are you mad at him for? Oh, he tells everybody that I don't know how to lead an orchestra. Why, that's unreasonable. Oh, it's reasonable, all right, but I don't like it. <laughs> well, I don't blame you, Phil. I know how you feel. There are people right on this program who think they know more about comedy than I do. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny. But it's true, Phil. Everybody wants to be a comedian. They all think they can get laughs. I know, Jack. But for real laughs, none of us can top that Maxwell of yours. Boy, that's really terrific. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Jack, how's the old tub behaving? Oh, it's all right, Don. I've had no trouble, but I, um... Uh, well, I... I think I'm going to get rid of it. Get rid of it? Why? Oh, because nobody has respect for private property anymore. That's why. <laughs> Tell them what they did to your car, Jack. What happened? Oh, it burns me up just thinking about it. <laughs> 
Now, what was it, Jack? Well, I stopped in the store for a cigar. And when I came out, somebody had written on my car, Lulu loves Butch. <laughs> Gee, I was mad. Lulu loves Butch. That's awful. I didn't mind that so much, but I don't even know the people. Oh. <laughs> well, it's your own fault, Jack. You brought it on yourself when you put that sign on the back of your car. Oh. Sign? Well, what does it say, Mary? Tune in on Jack Benny every Sunday night. <laughs> well, that's legitimate advertising. And so is this. Ladies and gentlemen, Jell-O is America's favorite dessert. It is economical, easy to make, and comes in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. What burns me up? Why don't Butch and Lulu get their own car? Okay. Oh, forget about Butch and Lulu. Well, anyway, I'm going to get rid of it. Did you put that ad in the paper, Mary? Yes, here it is. Oh. Uh, for sale or exchange, Maxwell Touring Car. All modern features, including self-starter and one-man top. Excellent view, only three blocks from the station. <laughs> Say, well, what's that got to do with it? My uncle sold a house that way. Oh, oh, I see. Car in first-class condition, owner satisfied, but could feel better. It's a fine ad, huh? Uh, right, wire, or phone, Jack Benny, care of Lonely Hearts Club, Hollywood. <laughs> I don't belong to that anymore. Anyway, that ad ought to bring some results. Huh? Say, Jack, yeah. I can't understand what you want to sell your car for. I told you why. Gosh, you, you've only had it a little while, and you're always bragging about it and fussing over it and going around with it all the time. Well? And now you want to part with it. Yes, I do. Gee, you're fickle. <laughs> well, Kenny, if you're so interested in my car, why don't you take it off my hands? Oh, I might at that. What do you want for it, Jack? Well, uh, well, let me see. Hmm. Well, Kenny... Would, uh, would $95 be too much? Hades, yes. <laughs> oh, it would. Well, if you're really interested in my car, maybe I can shave it a little. Oh, don't bother fixing it up. Well, Kenny, I can see that you don't want a car, so forget about it. Well, I'll think it over while I'm singing my song. Yeah, do that. What are you going to sing, Kenny? Moon over Manakura from the picture Hurricane. Well, that's a beautiful number, and right up your alley. Oh, wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Are you the party who had an ad in the paper regarding a Maxwell? Yes, I am. Are you in the market? I was, but I got out just in time. <laughs> Goodbye. Now, there's a lucky fellow. Sing, Kenny. Thank you. 
Moon Over Manicura from Hurricane, sung by Kenny Baker. And you know, Kenny, there's one thing that always impresses me. It's that last note. Goes on and on. Why do you hold it so long? I never give up a song without a struggle. <laughs> oh, well, it's very effective. But, Kenny, in order to keep your voice in such perfect condition, you must do a lot of practicing. I'll say. I sing in a bathtub every morning. Oh. And you know, Jack, I had the most embarrassing thing happen to me once. What was it? I reached for a high note and swallowed the soap. The soap? Ooh, boy, that must have been awful. Yeah, I bubbled for a week. <laughs> Bubbles Baker. <laughs> Mary. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for want of something better to do, tonight we are going to offer a play in the form of a nature study. A little drama entitled The Private Life of a Bumblebee, which we will present in three buzzes and one sting. It certainly will. Quiet. <laughs> Now, I will play the part of a rosebud. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Don, Kenny, and Phil will be insects as usual. Uh, this will go on. Um, uh, no. There's the phone jack. Let it ring. We've got a program to do. Oh. Okay. Maybe somebody wants to buy your car. Oh, oh, yes. Give it to me. Hello, Jack Benny talking. Uh, would you like to have a talk? Uh, oh, slap her, Ma. Let me talk to you. It's my nickel. Go ahead. Well, slap, look. I'm busy right now. Call me back later, will you? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a customer for your car. You have? Who is it? My wife's brother. <laughs> oh, your brother-in-law. Well, look, Slap, if he's a relative of yours, I'd rather not sell him my car. Go ahead. It'll serve him right. <laughs> well, okay. Bring him right over. Where are you, Slap? I'm around the corner in the drugstore in my new overcoat and a telephone booth. Hmm, are you standing up or sitting down? I don't know. It's dark in here. <laughs> Well, look, Slab, bring your brother-in-law right up, and if I sell the car, I'll give you a nice commission. Why not? Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Mary, that ad did get results. Huh? And come in. Hello, Slanza. Slapperman, how did you get here so quick? What quick? I got stuck in the elevator. <laughs> Say, Jack, I want you to meet my brother-in-law, Anatole Ginsburg. <laughs> well, 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 this is a pleasure, Mr. Ginsburg. I'm very, very happy to know you. Hello. Uh, well, Mr. Ginsburg, I understand you're very much interested in buying my Maxwell, is that right? I'm not telling. <laughs> now, look, if you want to buy my car, Mr. Ginsburg... Uh, say, Jack. What, Mary? I don't think you've got a Chinaman's chance with this guy. What Chinaman? Who's a Chinaman? <laughs> if the hat fits, put it on. <laughs> Stay out of this, Mary. Now, look, Mr. Ginsburg, if you want to buy my car, it'll have to be a cash proposition. You understand that? Ah, oh, don't worry, Jack. He's got the cash. But only last week in the higher sweepstakes, he won a prize amounting to... It's a lie. <laughs> boys, boys. It was in the neighborhood of $5,000. Why did you tell him? Did I say exactly? <laughs> now, look, fellas, wait a minute. Let's not take up a lot of time arguing. Mr. Ginsburg, do you want to buy the car or not? Yes. Don't be yesing with my money. <laughs> Quiet, quiet, Anatole. Behave yourself. Be a gentleman. Where's your etiquette? Look who's talking etiquette. If it wasn't for me, you couldn't even speak English. Is that so? <laughs> yeah. You said it. Now I'm satisfied. <laughs> hey, boys, what is this anyway? The affairs of Anatole. <laughs> now look here, Anatole. A man with your money should own a car like this. Now I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you have it for $95 because I like you. Make it 50 and drop the affection. <laughs> now, look, Slap, I'd like to sell the car to your brother-in-law, but $95 is the lowest I can take. I'm voting out. <laughs> All right, 85. I'm still voting. Now, go ahead. I don't care. Wait a minute, Anatole. Please, don't be a chimpanzee. Come here. For who's Mr. Nikkei the Maxwell? What's the name again? The is old enough to put it. I need it like a hole in a head. <laughs> and besides, he looks like a crook. I resent that. Say, Jack, did they say anything about Jell-O? That I'll buy. Mazel tov. <laughs> now, look, at what's going to happen here? Am I selling the car or not? Ah, hold on, Jackie boy. I know how to cleanse the deal. Take us out for a ride, and if Anatole likes the car, he'll buy it Anatole a time. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, I'll take you out for a ride, and then we'll talk business. That okay with you, Mr. Ginsburg? I'll take the ride anyhow. Well, he's weakening, Jack. All right, you and Anatole can sit in the back seat. You'll find it nice and comfortable. Uh, play something, Phil. Come on, Mary, you can sit in front with me. I will not. Quiet, I bought cushions this morning. Let's go, boys. So long, gang. So long, Jack. We're Come on, Anatole, make it snappy. All right, don't push me. <laughs> The car's rolling along pretty good. No trouble so far. We've only gone half a block. Well, is that bad? Say, Mary, turn around and see if the boys are enjoying the ride. Okay. Oh, Jack, I can only see Schlepperman. What? Hey, Schlepp, where's Anatole? I'm sitting on him. He wants to jump out. <laughs> well, I'll speed her up. You'll see something. Hold on, everybody. Hey, what's that? I wonder what that noise is. So the spark plugs are doing the Big Apple. <laughs> hey, Anatole, how do you like the way the car runs? Quiet, I'm getting seasick. <laughs> and I ain't got an appetite neither. Hey, Jack, look out. Look out for that bump. What bump? Oh, I see it. Well, that wasn't so bad, eh, Mary? <laughs> no, but your friends just left. <laughs> They did. Hey, Slap, Anatole, where are you? They fell out. Well, I better go back and get them. Wait a minute, fellas, I'm coming right back. Don't bother, I wouldn't buy it anyhow. I don't blame them. Mm, that's a fine thing, Mary. Why didn't you notice that bump sooner? You're driving. I am not. You've got the steering wheel. I didn't before we hit that bump. <laughs> well, give it back. You haven't even got a driver's license. Might as well go home now. Better stop at this gas station. That bump knocks the air out of my tires. Me too. <laughs> nice landing, Jack. Well, I was going pretty fast there, you know. Good evening, sir. What'll it be? I'd like some nice, fresh air. For breathing or tires? Tires, of course. Okay. Do you want any gasoline? No. He makes his own. I do not. <laughs> All right, put in two gallons, buddy. Two gallons? Is this car on a diet? Don't get gay, just put it in. Okay, sporty. <laughs> Where's the gas tank? What? Where's the gas tank? Under the seat. Get up, Mary. Gee, is that the gas tank? Yeah. I've been using it for an ashtray. <laughs> That's fine. Right here, bud. Hey, Bill, put in two gallons. I've got it. <laughs> hey, that's enough. I said two gallons. I'm sorry, mister, but we gave you two and a half. Well, I'm not going to pay for it. I asked for two gallons, and that's what I want. It's only a matter of eight cents. I don't care what it is. You made the mistake, not me. But, gee, it's only eight cents. <laughs> Young man, do you realize that a family in China can live for two weeks on eight cents? So can you. Quiet. <laughs> oh, Jack, don't be so tight. I'm not tight. It's not the money. It's the principle of the thing. 
I'm not going to pay for one more drop than I ordered. All right, I'll match you. Double or nothing. Oh, no, you won't. What do you think I am, a chump? Quiet, Mary. <laughs> You guessed it. All right, buddy, what do I owe you? Two gallons, that's 32 cents. You want to pay it all now? <laughs> yes, and don't be smart. Here you are. Come on, Mary, let's go. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it'll start this time. Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, there she goes! Look out, Jack! You're in reverse! I am! There's a car behind you! Watch out! Oh, what's the matter with me anyway? Hey, you, where do you think you're going? I'm sorry, mister. It was all my fault. Of all that careless stoke. Say, I ought to punch you right in my nose. Hey, you, you can't say that to Jack. He can, too. Quiet. <laughs> now, look here, mister. If I've damaged your car, I'll pay for it. You better or you'll be sorry. Oh, yeah? Let's beat it, Mary, before I lose my temper. Oh, boy, you were lucky that time. I wasn't scared of him. He didn't upset me. Yeah, then take that cigar out of your ear and let's go. <laughs> Oh, I was looking for that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey, we're off, Mary. Yippee! Yee! Here's a swell new dessert your family's going to love. It's quick and easy, and it's delicious. The name of it is Pear Strawberry Mold, and it's a tempting combination of luscious strawberry jello and canned pears. And it's so easy to make that anyone can prepare it, but so colorful it even makes a swell party dessert. Here's all you have to do. Just dissolve a package of strawberry jello in a pint of hot water, turn into a mold, and chill until firm. Unmold on a platter and decorate with slices of crisp canned pears and maraschino cherries. A beautiful mold of shimmering strawberry jello garnished with cherries and pears. And it tastes every bit as good as it looks. For strawberry jello is packed full of delicious, extra rich fruit flavor. All six of Jell-O's delicious flavors have that extra rich fruit flavor, too, which makes every Jell-O dessert a triumph every time. So ask your grocer for the one and only genuine Jell-O. <laughs> the last number of the ninth program in the new Jell-O series. We're with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Mary, isn't it funny how nice and smooth the car runs when you and I are all alone in it? Huh? Yeah, that's always the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, darn it, another flat. Fix it, Mary. No, it's your turn. That's right. Good night, folks. <laughs> Baker's appeared on this program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. The melody, Mama, That Moon's In Again, is from the big broadcast of 1938, and The Sweet Someone is from Love and Hisses. This is the National Broadcasting Company.